Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna to be creating this makeup look. This was a highly, highly requested makeup look. I wore this uh, makeup to the Miss Austin, Texas pageant that was a couple of weeks ago that I had the honor of being on the judges panel. It was such a cool experience and such a huge honor for me being a native Austin Knight and being able to be part of that process and select the Miss Austin Teen Texas and Miss Austin Texas for 2019 and 2020 was a really, really cool experience. So I'll share a couple of pictures from the night. I get, didn't get a ton of pictures Paul and the girls got to come, so it was a really cool night, especially for the girls, because they've never seen anything like that before. Um, I did wear my hair curly for the day, so we have a little bit straighter hair, but I feel like this look is a pretty easy to achieve, glamorous, neutral makeup look that um, you can either kind of tone down or tone up, depending on what your preference is. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy my videos. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So first things first, I'm gonna prep my eyes, and I'm using the Milani eyeshadow primer. I always use this. This is like my third tube of this and then it's time to replace it. And I just like to use my fingers honestly to blend this in because it's quick and easy and I think it's better than a brush. And I blend it from the lash line up to the brow bone. I like this primer a lot because it's pretty sheer and translucent but it gives a little bit of brightness to the lid so if you have darker lids it will give a subtle brightness but it's not colored so it's not going to alter the eyeshadow color that you layer on top. So for that look, I primarily used uh, little pans from my uh, Salt New York palette. If you don't have this palette, you guys, it is so beautiful. I have it in gray and then I also have a black one here. I'll show you the black one. Have it in black. So I have all of my Sydney and Grace eyeshadows in the gray one and that's uh, primarily what I used for this look. Most of what I used was from this uh, from these, I think the only thing I'm missing from this is a brow highlight. So the first shade that I used in my crease, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out so I can tell you what the name of it is. It is San Diego by Sydney Grace, and this is what it looks like. It's just a nice like mid-tone matte uh, warm brown. So I just took that one and worked it back and forth into my crease. I wanted to create a real rounded shape with this look. So you can notice that I'm not only going back and forth, but I'm also kind of pulling down. So I really have that nice rounded look. And then I also kind of pull it down to meet my uh, lash line. So I have that nice connection from my lashes to my crease color. And you can see this color has quite a bit of pigment. When it goes on the skin, it actually translates a little bit darker, I feel like, than it looks in the pan. So if you're much more fair than me, I would probably go with something a little bit lighter than this one. But if you're my shade or even a little darker, this is a good option. Now you can certainly build to this if you're lighter than me. It's not that you can't use this, but it might be easier to try something uh, lighter and then add to it with this one. It'll just help everything look more blended and more airbrushed. Sometimes when we go in with too dark of a shadow first, it's harder to blend and kind of get that seamless transition. I'm gonna scoot you guys a little bit closer because I'm looking at the monitor and I feel like I feel like up closer would help a little bit. There you go, so you can also see how this is making the green in my eyes really stand out because it has that really warm orange tone to it. So next I'm gonna add a little more darkness and depth in the outer corner. I'm gonna go in with this shade, it's called Dark Chocolate by Sydney Grace. It's a matte, dark, deep, really, really reddish brown. And I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. This is actually by Ruffer, it's the uh, P07C brush. And the first brush that I use is also by Ruffer, it's the P07A brush. And I'm just going to concentrate a little bit of this just in the outer corner, pull it down to the lash line, and kind of blend that out. But I don't wanna take it too far over. I really wanna keep, for my eye shape, I really wanna keep that darkness just in the outer corner. Now you really don't need much at all. I'm like barely tapping my brush in here. This eyeshadow has a lot of pigment, so it will pick up a lot of pigment if you use good brushes. Uh, so I'm really just tapping it. I'm not even swirling or digging it into it. I'm, I'm just lightly tapping and I'm getting just as much as I want. Now this brush is really good for product placement, but to blend it out, I'm gonna go back to the bigger brush and I'm just gonna softly sweep it over. I didn't add any product to this brush, I'm really just using this to kind of soften those edges a tad. So next I'm gonna go in with my lid color and this is the color that really stands out for the whole look. It's the shade Blushed, it's also by Sydney Grace. This is what it looks like. It is highly foiled, metallic, peachy, kind of has that rose gold tone to it. It is so beautiful, let me show you what it looks like. I mean it's so 
so light reflective it's beautiful so you can use your finger to apply this or you can use like a really like small uh, dense shader brush this is by mac and it's the 272 and i am literally just going to press it onto the lid as if it were my finger so i'm not really blending it i'm just like kind of pressing and I'm going to take it all the way to the inner corner, press, 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 right up to that crease line. I'm going to be careful not to place it on top of this darker shadow out here because what that's going to do is it's going to, um, that foiled metallic sheen is going to completely alter that color. And I don't want to do that. So I really want to try and keep it nice and clean and keep it concentrated on the part that we have not put shadow yet. Now normally I find that I have to go back with my crease brush and just go over that matte shade and even kind of softly sweep it over the metallic. If any metallica gets on top of that matte, like I said, it just changes it a little bit and you kind of lose that dimension because matte recedes light and shimmer reflects light. So if you put shimmer all over, you're gonna lose that quality of that darker shadow creating definition, if that makes sense. So I would like to kind of go over it with uh, my brush that just had the matte shade just to make sure I'm kind of removing any um, of that metallic shadow that might have like found its way there. So for my brow highlight, I'm gonna dip into the highlight shade in the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Film Star Bronze and Glow Palette. And I'm gonna use this for my brow highlight and I'm also gonna use it to highlight the inner corner of the eye. This highlight has like the softest tone to it. So you don't have to be too careful with it, if that makes sense. Sometimes when I'm doing the inner corner of the eye, if I'm look, doing something that's really foiled or really yellow or golden, you have to have a really light hand because it just can look a little funny if you use too much. This one is, this product is so soft that you really can't, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, I mean, you really can't. I feel like even if you try to make it look bad, you can't. <laughs> so I like to just pop that right in the inner corner and you can see what that does. It just gives a little bit of brightness right there in the inner corner. I'll never forget when I worked for Mac, there was a senior artist. The senior artists were always the team of artists that would go and do fashion week. They were always the artists that would test the products well before we ever saw the products. They were really kind of like the um, elite artists of Mac. And I'll never forget one of them saying that putting a little highlight there is like instant celebrity. And, that, and I've always thought and said that since then and I'll never forget that. Next, I'm gonna fill my brows in and I use the NYX Precision Brow Pencil for this I'm just gonna kind of brush them first and then I'm going to fill them in and then I use a brow gel to kind of soften the brow so that I don't have too penciled of a look my microblading is starting to fade it's time for me to touch them up my microblading lasts me about a year I get a lot of questions on how long it lasts I think it's said that it can last up to two years. Uh, mine doesn't last that long for a few reasons. Um, one, the products that I use in my skincare, I know that some of them have ingredients that are uh, like fading to the ink. Uh, also, I do a lot of treatments on my face, uh, exfoliators, things like that. Those will help, those will really kind of accelerate the fading of them. So if I were more careful, I could probably get a longer wear out of them, but I don't mind, you know, for me, getting a full year out of them is pretty good. So if I pencil my brows in, the brow gel I like to use on top of it is either the Hourglass or the Benefit Gimme Brow. I also like the Glossier Boy Brow, but I'll use that one more so on the days that I don't really wanna pencil them in first, cause that one to me gives a little more color and uh, I find that if I use the Glossier Boy Brow after I've penciled them in, sometimes it's just too much, so. This one is really uh, nice and just complements a penciled in brow pretty well. This is the shade uh, Warm Brunette. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my eyeliner and I am gonna be applying false lashes. So I want my liner to be a little thicker and I want it to be really, really true black. So I'm using the pen Penty. <laughs> I'm using the Fenty uh, Fly Line Liner. This pencil, or this pencil, what is wrong with me today? This is one of the richest, darkest, liquid liners I have tried. And it's really wet, so when you put it on, it's just very opaque, meaning it's not see-through, it's not something you have to build a lot to get a consistent line. It is really black. So I start with a smaller line, and then I'll go back and um, make it a little thicker. First, I wanna get the shape of my wing, which my wings are always very subtle. You know, I don't do a really dramatic eyeliner. Then I'm gonna go back and thicken it up a little bit. 
I find the easiest way to create a thicker winged liner is to start small and slowly build. And by slowly build, I mean basically create a small line and then go almost directly on top of it, but slightly higher. And then just keep doing that until you get the thickness that you want, opposed to cr trying to create a very thick line right off the bat. Because if you create a very thick line right off the bat and it's not even, or you get a little bump or your hand shakes, it's gonna be more noticeable than if you're creating a thin line and then you have a little mess up, uh, you'll have a smaller, little inconsistency, which you're likely to go over and smooth out anyway by increasing that line, if that makes sense. But if it's too thick and then you mess up, then you end up making it way too thick. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's about a good level of thickness for me. I have small eyes when I'm looking open, sometimes my lid disappears, so I don't wanna make it too thick. Perfect. For lower lashes, I'm using the Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pencil, actually called Eye Pen, but it's a pencil, and it's the shade Copper Glow. And I'm going to apply this just on my lower lash line about halfway over. And then I always go over it with a shadow to uh, smoke it out. And I'm actually gonna take the first shade that I put in my crease, it's that shade San Diego, that kind of warm um, peachy brown. And I'm gonna go right on top of that liner. Because I have that liner there first, it's actually gonna translate a little bit darker than it is in the pan. I don't really go in with a very dark a shadow here because I have that darkness already from the pencil if I do something really dark like if I were to go in with this dark chocolate uh, Which is essentially kind of I want that darkness on the lower lash line But if I were to go in with that it would be it would be too much for my eyes So I go with something a little lighter But because I'm using a more precise brush and because I have that liner there first it always translates darker So when I want a really glam look I never skip this step I used to do this step daily But then my eyes got really sensitive and I kind of cut out doing it um, Just because I try and keep makeup out of my waterline But I'm gonna line the inner rim waterline with the wet n wild highlighter This is actually a brow highlight. It's called the ultimate brow and I'm gonna pop this right in my inner waterline This to me is like pageant eye makeup that brightness on there paired next to that dark lower liner just makes the eyes pop in the most glamorous way. I think it's so beautiful. It reminds me of pageant makeup. It reminds me of like t television makeup, like news anchors, just very, very, do you see what that does? It's just, it's hard to explain. And wait till I have the lashes on and the mascara. It just adds this, this most glam little effect to the eyes that I love. I, like I said, I used to do it every day, but I should probably start trying it again because my eyes have gotten much better now that I've removed my lashes, my lash extension. So maybe I'm gonna try and add that back to my routine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop on false lashes and I'll be right back. I do use the uh, Demi Wispies by Ardell. I buy them in the five pack. I think I get these off Amazon or from Ulta. I'll have everything linked down below, including these lashes. These are hands down my favorite eyelashes. Um, if you ever see me in stories and I get a lot of times like, what mascara are you wearing? And it's always these. If my lashes ever look phenomenal in Instagram stories, it's these, it's not uh, It's not mascara because my lashes are, you know, my, my lashes, they need a little bit of work. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these on and I'll be right back. So can we talk about what a difference lashes make? I did add a little bit of mascara. Um, I usually always add mascara after I've applied lashes to make my natural lashes blend into the false lashes and also kind of lift them. If you ever apply false lashes and you feel like one's more lifted than the other, applying some mascara will really kind of help lift them so that they're kind of evenly shaped. So I will link the foundation that I used um, and the powder and concealer all that down below, but I'm gonna go ahead and contour um, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Palette to contour. Uh, this has been probably my most used product the last month. I love it. Uh, the contour is like the perfect shade of, it's a little bit cooler than my normal bronzer, but I can certainly use this as a bronzer if I want, but it also works great as a contour, especially a really light contour. So if you're someone that doesn't contour a lot or contouring kind of scares you, you're really, really not sure where to apply it, uh, I would recommend going with a powder and I would recommend going with something like this tone that's not too dark. It just, it's just the softest, uh, it's just the softest contour color and it has a little bit of sheen. So sheen is gonna make lines be a little softer. So I just apply this right kind of here from my hairline over to right about where my cheek starts to pop. And then I take it right around the hairline. I'm using this type of brush because it's really thin and I can just use the tip of it to apply it opposed to like a big fluffy bronzer brush. 
I'm just gonna apply this right around the hairline. And you can even use this to contour the sides of the nose. Now, keep in mind, it's not gonna be a super detailed contour because it is such a bigger brush, but you can just use the tip of it and you can apply it just on the sides of the nose if that's where you like to thin out and kind of define the nose area. It's the brush, the brush is 136 by MAC. This brush is like probably 10 years old, so I can't promise that they still carry it, but you can certainly find something similar in shape, I'm sure with other brands, but this is what the brand, this is what it looks like. It's big and fluffy, but you can see that it's real narrow. So it's not as fluffy and round as a typical powder brush is. I love this powder for the nose area because it is so soft that you can apply it pretty liberally and it doesn't look like orangey or too dark. So I have been pretty obsessed with this blush color. It's by Sydney Grace and it's called First Date and it's the softest peachy with some shimmer to it. It's so beautiful. And I'm just gonna pop this right on the apples of my cheek. Do you see what that did? It's so beautiful. So I also wanna highlight the center of the face. So I'm gonna use the highlight uh, shade from this Charlotte Tilbury palette. And I'm gonna go in with a brush like this, so much smaller. This is the Morphe M501. I don't particularly love this brush, but the shape and size is really good for this particular technique. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on the tip of my nose, a little bit here on the cupid's bow, a little bit here in the center of the forehead. And if you want to, you can kind of highlight right around here to create this little C. I'm pretty light-handed here, just because I do start to get into like enlarged pores here, and highlight will magnify texture, so I keep it really soft and light there. I try not to go overboard. But I really like this center of the face look. I think it's really beautiful. So for lips, I wanted a defined lip that was gonna last all night. So I used a couple of products on my lip. Um, the Christian Audette Lip Pencil in Nude Sandals. This is the part of the Lisa Lisa D1 collab. So I kind of line the lips and I kind of press them together. I did have a little bit of lip balm, which really helps my lip liner look softer um, and not so harsh. The lip balm that I had on is uh, by Laneige and it's the uh, Sleeping Care Lip Sleeping Mask. I really like this one a lot. So I layered lipsticks. The first lipstick that I put on is by Charlotte Tilbury and it's the shade Live It Up. It's part of her hot, uh, I think it's called Hot Lips Collection. And this one is really pigmented, really creamy. So I put a little bit of that on, kind of press the lips together. Then I layered a little bit of the nude lipstick by the uh, Lisa Lisa D1 and Christian Audette collab. It's the shade Golden Tiger. and I apply that directly on top. And this is the completed look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it easy. I consider this a pretty glamorous makeup look, but I like to keep the steps pretty simple, easy to follow, so I hope it's something that you feel like you can recreate. As always, I'm gonna have every product linked in the description box below, so be sure and check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.